Okay, so P8.9, resolution of forces. Now, sometimes you want to know how much of a force is acting in a different direction or how much of a velocity is in a different direction, okay? So remember, vectors have got magnitude and direction. Sometimes you want to know how much is in which, is in which direction. So let's use the example of uh, the velocity vector to start with. Uh, if we would say that I've got a ball and it is traveling at a speed of 30 meters per second. Okay. Now I want to know how fast is it going up. Okay, so I want to know, or how fast is it going along, but well, then I want to know what the vertical component of that speed is. And I might want to know how fast is it going along. So what I've done is I've split it into the vertical and horizontal. And as you can see, this is exactly the reverse of what you were doing in last lesson on parallelogram forces. So on parallelogram forces, you were starting off with two components, so a horizontal, so one in one direction and one in another direction, and draw in the resultant force. But when it comes to resolving forces in a vertical or horizontal direction, you start off with the resultant force, and you say, okay, how much of that is in the vertical direction and how much of that is in the horizontal direction. And you can see that the little square here, the little parallelogram here, that does exactly that. And this distance from there to there, that would be how much is in the vertical. And this bit from here to here, that would be how much is in the horizontal. If you measured this and came up with a scale, and then measured this and came up with a scale, and measured this and came up with a scale, you could work out how much of each one. Okay, that's, that's, it, in, that's it in its simplest form. Um, and it's really, really handy for when it comes to working out objects on a slope. Okay, so let's go for the next example. So that one was velocity. Let's have a look at the force one now. So this is my slope. I know that my slope has got an angle of theta and I've got a car on the slope. Handbrake's on, so it's not going to go down the hill. So I've got my car on my slope. Now I know that my car's not moving, okay? So I know that my car is in equilibrium. It's parked, you know, precariously, but it's still parked. And I know that um, it's got the force of weight acting down the slope. Not down the slope, sorry, vertically downwards. Which means that I must have some other forces balancing that weight out, otherwise it's going to roll down the slope. So the first force that I know that's going to be on there is, I know there's going to be some friction, don't I? I know there's going to be some friction, and I know that that friction force is going to be going up the slope. I don't know how big that friction force is, but I know there's going to be some friction going up the slope. I know that I've got weight going at, acting straight downwards, and I must have another force that's going upwards, which we call the normal reaction force. And that normal reaction force, that is provided by the electrons in the slope repelling the electrons in the car. Okay, so we know that that's, the more the weight pushes down into it, the more these electrons repel each other. Okay, so, next step. I know that the normal reaction force, and the key is in the word normal, normal means at right angles in physics, it always, always means in, at right angles. So I know that the normal reaction force is at right angles to the slope. Okay, so, now, also work out how big it is because if I take this line backwards down here like that and then if I know that this is the length of my weight here yeah, that's the size of my weight I know that my um, friction is 
can scan to make it so that we're at right angles here. Okay? So I know that that one is at right angles because I know that the friction force must be running parallel and I've got that as um, 1.8 centimeters. So I know that, um, that this is my friction force. If I measure this one as well, 2.6. 2.6 I know that my normal force is there so that's 2.6 up 1.8 that way and my weight was um, 3.5 so I can work out how much each one is but the way that I've done it is I've worked out how much is parallel to the slope that's the friction force and I did that by um, Knowing what the perpendicular distance between the weight and the normal force was, so that's that bit there. It's my, it's my balancing figure effectively. Um, and then I've got this one here. If I just took it straight downwards and then looked at where a right angle met the bottom of the weight, that's how long that must be. So I know that that is the um, part of the weight that is perpendicular to the slope, and I know that this is the part of the weight that is parallel to the slope. So I've resolved the two and because I knew it was in, in, in equilibrium I knew that the perpendicular part of the weight must be the same as the normal and I knew that the parallel part of the weight must be the same as the friction um, so if I, so if I so this, we said this is 3.5 centimeters so if that was 350 newtons I could have then worked out that um, this one was 2.8, wasn't it? So that would be 280 newtons. So that's 1.8, so that would be 180 newtons. And that way I can work out how big all the other forces are simply by drawing a scale diagram. And then I could work out how much friction would need, be needed to be to keep it in place, for example. Um, if you knew the angle and you've got, you know, some clever maths and some more A level, you can use um, Sokotoa to calculate these limbs. You can see that this one here um, is going to be, and the only tricky bit with this is you need to remember that that angle there is theta. So this would then be um, the uh, hypotenuse and this would be the adjacent and this would be the opposite. Okay, And then you just use this and that angle to work out these different limbs. That's, like I say, that's more A level than GCSE. The main thing you need to be able to do is you need to be able to break it up into either vertical and horizontal or parallel and perpendicular. And it's exactly the same as this, but going backwards. So, like, just to just, just summarise, this bit, you start off with two separate forces, you draw the resultant force by completing the triangle. This bit, you start off with a, a resultant force, and you then got to complete square to work out what the horizontal or vertical bits might be. Okay, so in this one, I gave you this example, and this was velocity. So I said that was the horizontal velocity, and that was the vertical velocity. Remember, anything that's, this will work. Anything that is a vector, and it, you know, you go, and, you, and it doesn't matter. You can pick which way you want to be. But the key thing is make sure that the two that you pick are at right angles to each other. Okay so that it turns into a square. So you say, how much in this direction?